Cavern of Snow was made oh, 25 years ago, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what has happened since then? Uh, has so, uh, in your observation, uh, so the role of women, the role of nuns, has anything moved? Um, yes, yes. I, I would say that in many ways, in the last 25 years, the role of nuns in Tibetan Buddhism, at least, has taken a quantum leap. I mean, from being uneducated and on the very, very borders of um, monastic life, they are now, I mean, most nunneries, both in Tibet and in um, India and Nepal, I have study programs. Nuns, as you know, have become Geshe Ma, um, which is like Doctors of Divinity and Kenmos. And uh, in our nunnery, for example, um, we have about 10 nuns who are committed to long life retreat mm -hmm. and are training to become uh, Tokden Ma. That means like yoginis, a very special lineage within our, our monastic system. And they are very, very uh, committed to their practice and the, the yogis themselves teach them. And also our nuns who are about to become a Kenmo, which means like professors. And they are, tomorrow they're doing a Nyungne, which is the, um, for a week for the, um, this is prostrations and fasting uh, centered on the thousand armed uh, Avalokiteshvara Chenrezig. And many lay people come and also uh, monks come and one yogi comes and they all practice together. Mm. And nowadays, I mean, our nuns also do ritual dancing. They're very good at ritual. And um, in our monastery, I give gratitude to the monks because who has trained these nuns? It's been the monks. Mm -hmm. And the monks have trained them with great love and, and great admiration for the qualities of the nuns. They are their best admirers. And, and so now everything that the monks do, big uh, celebrations, the nuns go along. When the nuns have special celebrations, the monks come along. They're very now brothers and sisters in the Dharma. Mm -hmm. And most of our teachers, the majority of our, our philosophy teachers of Buddhist philosophy, are the nuns themselves, the graduated nuns. They are teaching now. And also being invited to other places like Ladakh and Kinura and elsewhere to teach. Um, so yes, I mean, not only our nunnery, but um, all the nunneries around now are, are flourishing. Mm -hmm. And the nuns have gained great self-confidence. This is the most important thing. Previously, what do the nuns lack most confidence? low self-esteem, right, mm -hmm. uh, for being nuns and not monks, praying very hard to come back next lifetime as a male so they can join the monastery. I don't think they do that anymore. In fact, I have met monks who have said they're praying very hard to come back next lifetime as a female because they think the nunneries are so much better run. And they like the feeling in nunneries more than the monasteries. So now the potential for the female is being recognized and appreciated. And uh, yes, I mean, so quickly. Once the idea grew, it, it's, it's taken form. We are still on the border now with ordination, higher ordination for nuns. That is also about to happen, but whether or not it will be accepted, we don't know. Uh, that has always been the big war. When, when the idea of education came up, once they got the idea, they thought, yes, what a good idea to educate the nuns. Great. And so the monks stepped forward to train and educate them. No problem. But this problem of higher ordination, pecuniary ordination, is still, it's, yeah, it's a very interesting stone wall. Mm -hmm. The opposition against uh, something which the Buddha himself uh, inaugurated. In the time of the Buddha, there were many, many nuns. And apparently, even in the 12th century, there are many accounts of nunneries, but never mentioned in the monks' chronicles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So there's always been that interesting, um, I don't know, interesting reservation when it comes to, to monasticism, the higher monasticism in the Tibetan tradition. But it will happen, it will happen. In the meantime, the nuns are ready now. You know, they're highly educated, very confident. They can go forward. Um, whereas previously they, they lacked any real learning and they would not have been able to sustain the role of fully ordained nuns. Mm -hmm. Now they can do it, mm -hmm. nothing to stop them. So yes, it's a good news on that, on that count. The nuns have really come forward and are appreciated not only by the monks, but also by lay people and by everybody. Much respected now in a way that hadn't happened previously. In Tibet also, everywhere. So nuns in Laronga, in this big nunnery with thousands and thousands of nuns in Eastern Tibet, they've mm -hmm. just published 25 volumes of nuns teaching. Mm -hmm. The female voice in Buddhism. Wow. And yeah. they themselves are, are teachers and, and practitioners and amazing women. So it's not just here, but also in Tibet that women are coming up, get up gompa with all their big rituals, which they do all the year and their, their, their extreme expertise in the, uh, in uh, yoga, in tumo and, and so forth, yes. which they're even teaching to the monks now because yes. they, they are supreme in the practice. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is, this is the time when Tara is manifesting her, her, her qualities and uh, really supporting all the nuns. Wonderful. So this is good. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, it is. <laughs> Wonderful. And you're very much part of it, Jutsuma, by, you know, uh, it is DGL. A small part. All the, not just our nunnery, all the nunneries are, are really blossoming now. It's, it's very, you know, uh, it's not that that puts the monks down. It's that it brings up this other side, the feminine side, which they really appreciate. I mean, I don't know other monasteries, but our monastery of Kampaka and Tashijong, the monks love the nuns. Mm -hmm. They they really appreciate them. I mean, love in the in the real sense, and uh, admire them. And uh, really, they're like brothers and sisters. So it it's a very beautiful thing now happening for the monks as well as for the nuns. Everybody gains. Wonderful, wonderful, Chitsuna. Mm -hmm. Because in the Dharma centers, now also speaking for the Westerners, you know, there are, of course, we all know that at least, we always keep statistics also for Tushita, and this is all nationalities, you know, like a hundred nationalities, not all, of course, um, you know, that the majority are women. So then, of course, it's so important that we have also female teachers, because otherwise we go like, sure, it's all great, but... But, you know, it's, uh, yeah, so it's so inspiring, of course, um, to see also that the nuns, you know, from the shy and, you know, little, <laughs> always in the back, uh, really has the self-confidence. Yes, I think that is, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Great progress. I think yeah. so too. I mean, when, for example, you're talking about the nuns being in the back, um, when the monks come here for any big occasion, they sit at the back and the nuns are sitting in front and leading all of the rituals and the monks mm -hmm. have to follow them. Oh, really? And the monks are really happy about it. Oh. You know, they, they accept that. That's fine. They all sit in the back. Um, so it's good for everybody. You know, it's good for the monks. It's good for the nuns. It's good for lay people. It's good for the Dharma. I mean, it's a win-win situation. It's, it's not that one goes up, the other goes down, but both together go up. And um, by the way, His Holiness the Dalai Lama actually said to me many years ago that he said, sometimes I think that the future of the Dharma is in the hands of the women. His Holiness? Because, because yeah. yeah, His Holiness said to me, yeah. because you can see 
Indeed, you know, the majority of the audience are going to be female. And now gradually more and more authors and teachers and, and so forth are women. Why not? You know, I mean, nobody's taking anything from anybody. The, the hummer isn't the cake that you have to divide up. I mean, it, it's there for everybody. And nowadays as women become educated, then also they begin, you know, also many Dharma teachers and also, for example, um, uh, Pandita, um, Sayadaw Pandita, or, or Pandita, who is a, a very eminent Bhutan, uh, Burmese meditation teacher, <laughs> very, very stern looking. He said to me, and I hadn't brought this question up at all, he just said, that his best teachers were the women and that because women, one thing, because when you told them what to do, they just did it, whereas the monks always queried his teachings compared with others that they had received. But also he said, women can jump and fly in space. He said, they're at home like, you know, Kandro, you know, traveling in space. He said, women are naturally at home in the intuitive. Mm. Whereas men, most men like to take it step at a time. They, they can't just jump. Mm. And so he said, therefore, his, his best uh, meditators were the women. Women felt a natural kinship with meditation. Mm. So, I mean, and other lamas have said the same thing, that women are much more at home within the intuitive often. And therefore, uh, uh, you know, if they learn how to meditate, they, they really take off. So, you know, there are actually many, many um, advantages to a uh, female birth, including our, our natural affinity with the, the heart. You know, I mean, we don't have to learn how to be loving and compassionate because nature intends us to be loving and nurturing, you know, in order to be mothers. Mm -hmm. And so we feel at home within our emotions. We can talk about our emotions, right? And our feelings and so forth. Whereas many men, not only are they naturally more, less inclined to be in tune with their intuitive side, but also they're trained not to be emotional, you know, boys don't cry, boys don't feel this, boys don't feel that, you know, so they've grown up in, within this cage and um, it's very hard for them. That's why they have to learn how to come back into their, you know, emotional center. Whereas women already know, they're already there. So we have lots of advantages and, you know, we should be proud of having a female birth. It's a step up. <laughs>